above us here are the beautiful flat irons, beautiful aspect of Boulder, and we are at Chautauqua Park. Chautauqua Park was one of the places that our family and other families in the community would come to. It was just like the showcase of Boulder. You would want to show it off to your family members. Right over here is, is the area where if we were going to barbecue something, we would use this area. And I have family photos that show my mom when she was pregnant with me up here. So, you know, this was just a, a beautiful place to come up and just enjoy a Sunday afternoon. Like so many other of the older Mexican-American community, Chautauqua was definitely a place to come and enjoy. Uh, Regent Hall is part of the Chicano experience in Boulder. Many of the graduates from the high schools in the area came here. Regent Hall was also the focus of a lot of demonstrations during the late 60s and 70s uh, by the Chicano community. But also, I think we have to look at the positive aspect of it is the university committed to enrolling more Chicanos and black students during the late 60s and 70s. That contributed to the uh, growth in the Mexican-American community. Old Main was the administrative office for the MAP program. Just down the block was the TB1, which is the administrative building for the EEO programs. The experience of Mexican Americans on this campus was, a, uh, was both a positive and a negative experience. Uh, the students who were brought would go through a summer program and it was a very tough summer program and often a lot of students would find themselves uh, deciding they needed to go somewhere else or maybe college wasn't their experience. One of the things that uh, was on the Boulder campus is that the, although Latino faculty tried to attract other Latino faculty here, uh, oftentimes uh, they would stay for a year or two and then disappear and go to another institution. And oftentimes the institution was very Anglo as well as the community. And so uh, in terms of finding a community of interest, it was lacking. In the 60s and 70s, we definitely had our representation of athletes who went to state and performed extremely well. We had our scholars. There were even, you know, some of these athletes who became Cubs sweetheart. Whenever they had a dance, they would always select a woman and a man to represent the school. And so they also represented us really well. We were few during that time. Oftentimes we were only maybe five to 10 students who graduated, but I also knew that students went on to get their GED. Boulder High at that time had a place for everybody. There were different clubs and organizations. We were represented in many of those clubs. Where the Mexican-American community thrived during the uh, period, probably from 1920 to 1970. You can't see it, but behind us was an open field where softball was played constantly. The first folks to really arrive in the community were African-Americans and the Mexican-Americans began arriving in the 1910s. A lot of these houses have been changed. Gentrification has greatly reduced the representation of Mexican-Americans and African-Americans in this area. It was a thriving community. Now, most of the families really didn't get dispersed. Many of them just moved to Lafayette, Longmont, Louisville. The building that we're showing you right here uh, replaced the uh, inn. It was called Ray's Inn. It was owned and run by a black family. Uh, my recollection of it is that there was the best hamburgers in town. That's been changed. And then to the left of us, another building that has uh, been redeveloped, and that used to be uh, Brown's Grocery, run by an Anglo family. They moved out of the area, I think, in the early 60s and opened up a uh, grocery store up on Broadway. But they were part of the community. I remember my uh, cousin Carolyn was a very good friend friends of their daughter. We're in front of the Canyon Park. There were Quonsets on the uh, east side of the park area. I think there were probably two swings and a slide. It's not as nice as it is today. The Quonset area was used as the community center. Emma Martinez uh, was a major mover in retaining this area as a park. Some of the Mexican-American leadership in Boulder has gone before the Parks Department and asked them to name the park after Emma Martinez, and that was greatly received by the board. And I think that's important because it recognizes that, in fact, there was a Mexican-American community here. 
This was an important intersection in the community. The A&W Rupert Stand was such a popular place. Everybody would join and gather here, especially after swimming all day at the Spruce Pool. Originally, it was called the Hygienic, and it was a two-story wooden enclosed pool, and eventually they, it became an outdoor pool. Like myself, many of the Mexican Americans in the community surrounding this area came to Whittier. You know, even being a light-skinned Mexican, I still experienced racism here at Whittier. It wasn't pretty, but I have to give out kudos to my fifth grade teacher who made it a point to let the whole class know that it wasn't acceptable. The classrooms here were diverse because there were students of color in the community, uh, unlike the rest of Boulder with the majority majority was Anglo students. This is Casey Middle School before it was called Casey Junior High. Back when I was here in the six, late 60s, Casey was ethnically diverse, but nothing like it is today where the student population is about 40% Latino. It is now a green school and it's nationally recognized for being green. It is also recognized for their bilingual program here. It still continues to go through first through eighth grade. In terms of the Latino experience in, in Sacred Heart, I think at the time that we went to school, there probably were in the whole school probably about eight Mexican-American students, very, very few. In terms of experiences related to uh, discrimination, uh, I think it, I could say that I suffered discriminations from the priests, the nuns, and the students. And I cannot remember a time when the nuns or the student or the, or the priests would stand up and take a stand against discrimination. Across the street is the newer church, which is uh, probably built in the 19, uh, early 1960s. 